As a John, would you do it? I had a, I have a pair of shorts. I blew the button out of it. I think the button was designed uh, cheaply. Uh, there was very little cross supporting material. It was plastic. Join me for this video uh, where I show you how to design a button in Fusion 360. We'll sketch the button, uh, revolve it around, and put some holes in it for where the thread will go through and print it out. I need to determine the size of the button that I need to uh, produce. So I have the shorts, the button hole, and I just use my calipers uh, to, to measure the hole. And as you can see here, I'm at 20, but that's really pushing it. So I, I dropped it down to about 18, and that's what I used. I used a measurement of 18. Uh, stay tuned, you'll see where I designed the button, and we print the button. And then you may see a little bit of me sewing it on. So here's the, the finished uh, button sewn on. I was just sewn on with needle and thread. So we'll just do it on this plane. We'll go to, first, I'll, let me just draw a rectangle. Should be using parameters. Uh, my colleague John Christman told me about parameters. I should be using them. So we said 18. So I'm going to revile this. We'll go with 9. Is it 9? And that's definitely too large, but this gives me an idea of my boundaries. I'll do a spline. So if this is three, probably two millimeters. I don't know, three might be okay. We'll go with three. That'll give me some strength. And that's really it. This is what's going to be revolved. All right, now we'll trim. So I'm going to hit the T command. Get rid of all these extra lines. Then switch. And we'll revolve this. Axis is we're going to revolve around that axis. All right, there we go. So now, what do we have? We have a button. All right, next thing I got to create the holes. Right, so there's the thread. Calipers, one of the calipers are zeroed. I want an idea for minimum. That's 0.85. All right, the top of the head was 1.32. So I'm going to say 2 millimeter. Do a 2 millimeter hole. That'll give me plenty of clearance. Little rectangle. Is that too much? Is that too far apart for the center point of each hole? Go another one here. We go six by six. All right, so these will be extruded. Let's show the body. 
you guys get an idea visually what's going on. Great extrude. Need the sketch. Nope, I gotta delete this guy. Now I should be able to select extrude everything. Blow it through. Yes, okay, so now we got a hole. All right, I got my four holes. Now these are really far apart. I don't care. I might care. I don't know. We'll find out. But I'm going to say this is pretty strong now. Probably depends on material. I don't know if PETG is strong compared to PLA. Uh, but we will save this. And this is going to be a button V1. Pretty print selection. I and then we'll save it to our folder uh, button. Here we go. Now we got our button. Then we will open up Slicer. And again, get around. Right, let's see what the distance is. So this is 18. That's good. And then I'll do an arrange. It should print very quickly. Do a slice. And export the G code. Alright, we have that exported. Preheat. P E E G. And this is ESUN filament I'm using, green. See, that's the green filament there. Green for the heat up. If you haven't seen the Maker Coin, there's the, uh, the Maker Coin. See the uh, little Uncle Jesse Thor hammer below it. Okay, so that stops the preheat. I'll start it up again. Okay, we'll upload the file. Okay, it's going to be a fast print, so let's see if we can. Uh, Get this guy going. I think this is the hottest I've had this because I've been doing PLA prior to this. 
Let's check the temperature on this PETJ. 230 to 250, I'm reading the middle of 240, so it's probably okay. And by the way, that's 240 degrees C. So what it's doing is it's doing the infill and each time it does it, it's doing a cross pattern orthogonal to the last pattern. And that's for strength. But I could choose uh, different patterns for the way it does the infill, depending on what type of strength direction I want. But a typical approach is orthogonal. We're 90 degrees compared to the last uh, pattern. See if it's strong enough. It feels like the layers might peel apart, maybe. So, no, it is not strong enough. Let's see. Nope. 
every layer is peeling apart. So this material is not something that would work for that. This could be a temperature issue. So I'm going to unload this film and I'm going to put it in the blue. So the green filament is coming out which was left of the PETG and then the um, the other just continues right along with it. Good stuff. So we'll be ready shortly. See if we can get the part off now. It's very tough to get off. Oh, there we go. Check the strength of this. Alright, I think this button is strong enough. Now, if you don't know anything about sewing, uh, you don't have to tie a knot. Just lick your fingers, twist the thread together, rub it over your hands, twist it like this. I'll pull it and it creates a, a knot that'll work. Alright, sewing 101. Let's see if we can get a better position on the camera. It's really a lot of weight. Alright, I'm going to come from behind. That's how the thread will stop, and then I'm going to start threading this. Needle fits through the hole perfectly. We measured it, so it's better. I always stick the needle with some thread in the um, into the thread roll itself in the end. There we go. Button is sewn. Let's see if it fits. Okay, the button fits. I'm able to pull it. No problem. So this is a success, everyone. Alright, that other print with the PETG didn't work that well. I have to track down what that is. Anyway, thanks for watching the stream, everyone. This is a uh, read along the lines of Chris's uh, practical printing, where we uh, we printed something that is useful. So here's the the finished uh, button sewn on. It was just sewn on with needle and thread. 